Okay, welcome to uh, Membrane uh, course. This is the Membrane Technology for Clean Energy course. And uh, my name is Yang Mu Li, and I will be uh, co-teaching along with the Professor Zhuo Li uh, at the same department of the uh, Department of Energy Engineering. I wrote my name, my, just myself, because of uh, some reasons. Uh, but uh, actually, this is the co-teaching course with the Professor Zhuo Li. Okay? So I will be teaching September and October. Uh, uh, and I think uh, you know, Professor Drioli will be teaching from October, I think October 20, week of October 20th, till the uh, final exam, which is uh, December, uh, first or second week of December. Uh, but during the time, we invited uh, Professor Don Paul from uh, University of Texas at Austin and he will give us a lecture for one week. And he has been a, uh, a and he's right now, a world expert on uh, gas separation, polymer blending. And so that it's our honor to have him uh, uh, for this week. Uh, it, I think that's the week of, uh, the final week of uh, the October, I believe. Okay? And I've written those, uh, the schedule in this, uh, the excerpt, so I think I will distribute this to you. So I have written Professor Enrico Drioli there and as an instructor, and the websites or the, uh, the emails. Um, and uh, his office is right next to my office, which is in the same floor here, in the ninth floor. But he will be available, of course, I mentioned to you at the week of uh, October 20th, and he will be coming to the department in, at 19th of October till uh, the uh, December before Christmas. Uh, so this course, the Membrane Technology for Clean Energy, will focus on the membranes and membrane operations in clean energy generation and environmental protection. So we will deal with the energy and environment uh, using membranes. So the objectives is that the, at the end of the course, you will be able to understand the membranes for energy and water application, and you can independently investigate membrane operation in the energy environmental fields. Uh, so I will start you know, uh, here, and I will cover uh, the uh, several you know, history about the membrane development in the reverse osmosis and the gas separation. Um, if you take a look at the, uh, the last column, last, you know, on the bottom of, of this excerpt, uh, the first week, I missed the, uh, the, uh, the day before yesterday, the first class, uh, so that I will mention to you why I have missed that. But I think uh, that's related with the uh, membranes, and I will talk to you about it. But anyway, starting from today, I will talk about the history of membrane development. And it will be, I think it will be until next week. Okay, uh, but next week, uh, next Wednesday, still we do not have a class because this is the uh, official uh, holiday. <laughs> it's a substituted holiday, and so we will meet uh, the next Friday after this. But I think in that case, I think the uh, we will need to continue on about this membrane development, uh, perhaps the early early uh, third week. Then I think we can uh, talk about the preparation of the membranes, how, what is, uh, the, how we can make the membrane, and and the fourth week uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the, sp the characterization of the membranes, and the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Uh, the I have selected some, uh, but I didn't. You know, I just put it on the special topics. But uh, depending on interactions from. The, from the uh, from you and myself, I think we can choose some of the, those topics. Okay, so uh, I think it would, there will be some time that you introduce yourself to me and to other uh, you know, students, so that uh, why you attend this class, uh, or wh what you want to learn, okay? what you want to uh, uh, study about it, uh, so that uh, we can have some more interaction about this. Okay, and 
and, and, and so that uh, I will teach until uh, week seven, week seven the, the fr starting from week eight till uh, well, week 15, uh, Professor Gioli will be uh, responsible, but uh, he will talk about the membrane integration. Uh, and the week nine, uh, as I mentioned, the Professor Don Paul at UT Austin is teaching uh, the membrane gas operations and the basics about the membranes, or uh, the gas operations. Week 10, 11, uh, he will talk about the, uh, the uh, reactors and bioreactors and membranes for uh, blue energy and, and others uh, in the week 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, we can have a final exam. The exams, uh, we're going to have uh, two exams, but uh, those exams will be a uh, take-home exam, basically. In some cases, uh, we can have an oral exam combined with the, uh, the take-up exam. Okay? So I'll give you uh, the, uh, the topics or uh, papers to read and so that I can uh, ask some questions uh, along the line of those, uh, those, uh, those papers. Those papers might be uh, the review papers, perhaps the recent review papers in, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in, in some journals. So, so you can see uh, uh, and to read those journals for, uh, for recent uh, advances. The grading plans are that uh, I will be responsible for about the midterm. Uh, Professor Strioli will be responsible for the final. And uh, attendance, homework assignments, and the class participation, meaning that uh, how you are you know, reacting about uh, the what, what we are talking about, uh, whether you are just a sleeping or whether you are just, you know, just a sitting or whether you are, whether you are asking some questions, that that's the, uh, what the class participation means. Uh, the, we didn't have a class on September 3, uh, which was uh, the day before yesterday, because I had to go to evaluate the, uh, the European Membrane Master Program called Erasmus uh, Master Program, EM3, uh, held in Montpellier in France. And there was uh, last uh, Tuesday, and uh, there was a schedule for uh, six months ago. Uh, so I, had to, so I had to be there. So I didn't know this was uh, Wednesday. Anyway, uh, I was uh, impressed about the Erasmus program. Uh, every, every year they select, uh, EU selects uh, 15 to 18 scholarship students from all over the world. Uh, and and uh, and they select uh, out of 100, I think out of 100, yes, out of 100, they select about 15 or 18, depending on their uh, uh, the competition and, uh, and the available funds. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's been already uh, third year or fourth year. I think this is the fourth year. And they select the uh, 14th this year. And they, they call it the edition. E D I T I O N and the first, uh, first and second edition. Uh, in other words, the uh, first class and second class, uh, second year students have already, already been uh, graduated, and some of them have uh, entered into the PhD program, uh, or they went back to the uh, uh, their country, or they went they went to the uh, the industries. So about one third of the the Erasmus master graduated from this program, entered into the PhD program. The other one, the, the other one third, uh, went back to uh, their own country, uh, and the rest of them are, you know, uh, you know, having a job in, in mostly in your uh, EU. Okay? Uh, so that was uh, that was pretty good, and uh, the most interesting thing is that. Uh, uh, six universities participate in this program to have one degree. Okay? So that's called the joint degree program. Six universities are uh, the Montpellier in France, Toulouse in France, University of Toulouse in France, and uh, University of Trente in Netherlands, 
the Saragossa in Spain, uh, Lisbon, University of Lisbon in Portugal, and the last one is uh, Czech, uh, the University of uh, Praha or something. Okay? So, so six universities uh, participate in this program. Uh, University of Calabria, where Professor Tioli is, uh, is an uh, uh, associate partner in university, meaning that uh, they do not participate in the uh, master program, but they can accept the uh, student or the, uh, the research program uh, in, in some cases. So those, this, the unique of this program is that uh, the, uh, every student uh, when they enter into this program, stay one year in France, one year in France. Uh, so six months, six months in the Montpellier, another six months in the uh, Toul in Toulouse, and then they spread into our other universities, or the four universities they are participating, uh, depending upon the, their uh, their uh, their interest. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, University of Saragossa is a very uh, intensified into uh, the nanotechnology area, whereas uh, University of Chanter is more focusing on the, uh, the bio area. Uh, Czechor, Czechoslovakia and Lisbon is more focusing on the chemical engineering area or processing area. So depending on the, uh, the student's interest, students will be you know, spreading into the other uh, three or four uh, universities. So every six months, students will have to move anyway, okay? So uh, in two years, students have an opportunities to uh, experience six months in different uh, universities. So, uh, so for one degree, I think they, they knew about the, uh, at least the four universities, okay? Because they, have a, they had to stay six months in residence in, in, in there. Well, we have the, the similar program uh, with Spain and uh, with, uh, with uh, Italy, but uh, in, in doctoral uh, the stages, but, uh, but uh, so that's why the BB is here right now. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and uh, so I think this is a kind of good program on the joint, joint program, anyway. Uh, I, I give a lecture in there, in, in, in all of the students participate in the program, about one hour as a plenary lecture, uh, and uh, two other uh, prominent professors, including Professor Benny Freeman at UT, UT Austin, uh, gave a lecture. Although I met, miss his lecture because I have to leave on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, so uh, it started on uh, Tuesday. Wednesday and uh, until Thursday, uh, excuse me, yes, Thursday uh, morning. But I had to leave on, uh, on Wednesday afternoon, arriving here on Thursday, which is yesterday, to have a class this, this morning. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I missed uh, first uh, the class, but I think I hope that I can speed up or, or I can make up the class uh, later on if, if there is any, uh, the, uh, the you know, overlap in the class. The textbook that I chose is uh, written in the middle of the, uh, the first page. The, I, th I think I chose uh, uh, Rich, Richard Baker's, the third edition of the Membrane Technology and Applications. Uh, this is the third edition. Uh, actually, the Richard Baker, uh, uh, published this book from Wiley in 2012. And I, I, I like this book because this is a very exp extensive and uh, starting, from, starting from the history of the membranes, it, is, uh, it, it contains many of the material bases, processes, uh, and contain you know, many of his experiences. Uh, Richard Baker, Rich, Richard Baker is uh, uh, similar to Professor Gioli's age, okay, it's about 70 or 75, and he is the first, almost the first generation of the membranes, and he's the uh, the CEO of uh, the company called MTL, Membrane Technology and Research MTL, in based in uh, uh, the uh, San Francisco area, okay? 
And this company, mm, although it's not very big, uh, it has about 60 to 70, about 70 uh, researchers on membranes. Okay, so it's not a big company, but uh, about half of them are PhDs, and the rest of them are, you know, most of them are engineers and so on. Uh, they are making membranes. Not every, not every uh, you know, area, but they, they make the membranes. Uh, they, uh, they have a sales volume uh, of around, uh, I think it's about 60 million US dollars or something like that per year. Uh, anyway, uh, he is a uh, world expert in the membranes, and, and this is quite comprehensive. It's not that thick. Uh, no, it's not that thick. It's about... Uh, 570 paper, uh, pages and so on. Uh, although Professor Trioli's book, uh, I think uh, that it's, in, in some cases it's a volume one and two, but in many cases uh, uh, that's not written by one person, but it's written by many others, so it just edited uh, the versions. Um, you can find many edited versions of the membrane technologies, but uh, uh, I think I can find only few uh, the uh, single, uh, you know, author written uh, book. So I, li I like this book in, in overall introduction of the membrane technology. I have written uh, the, uh, the, the two more papers, two more uh, books as a references. Uh, Norman Lee, Tony Fain, and Winston Hoare, and uh, Takis Matsura uh, on the membrane, advanced, advanced membrane technology and application. This is the edited book. Enrico Drioli and Giuseppe uh, Barbieri. This is also an edited book. Uh, I don't know whether I have. Uh, okay. So it, it's, it, it has a two volumes, volume one and volume two. Anyway, there are many books on membranes. Uh, you can, you know, it, it should be over maybe maybe 20, 30 <laughs> textbooks. But uh, but I like this the the, the Baker's. Uh, Okay, that's uh, that's all that I can introduce myself and the uh, and the courses. Any any uh, questions, uh, comments? Okay, then I think we can start about the uh, his the, the first chapter. Uh, first chapter is uh, similar to the one that I have given you the last last semester, uh, last first semester. The topic is the same. But I have added some uh, the uh, articles uh, published in Science, okay? Uh, so that you can you can look at so that I can uh, I can tell you a little bit more about the uh, history of the uh, the membrane development along the line of the technology as well as the science, okay? Uh, so I have uh, uh, I'll give you some of the uh, examples. Actually. Uh, before the science article, the first article that I think is very important in, in the recent membrane development is this article. Uh, this article is published in the uh, Journal of Applied Polymer Science. This is the volume number one, issue number two. It published in 1959. Okay? So Journal of Applied Polymer Science published the first membrane-related article uh, in 1959. Okay. The author is uh, Wright and Breton, Wright and Breton at the University of Florida in Gainesville, and it's about water and ion flow across the cellulose membranes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry that I, I should have uh, sent you the uh, PDF file of this, of this uh, the, uh, the lecture, so you don't <laughs> you need to worry about the writing and so on. So, okay. Uh, I should have given you uh, this to you before the class. Uh, uh, yeah, what it, what it says is that although it's a, uh, and you can take a look at it, in fact, uh, this journal of polymer science as well. Uh, but what it is is that they have tested. They were at the chemistry department, and they were sponsored by the, uh, the, the California st uh, state, uh, in the United States. Uh, the uh, uh, Office of Saline Water, Office of Saline Water, and they received a project from the Office of Saline Water in the uh, in California, 
and, uh, and get the result. Uh, the objective of this work is that uh, how they can separate the water from the seawater. Okay? In other words, now, these days we have a lot of trouble about the, uh, the climate changes, particularly in, uh, if you take a look at the uh, California and uh, you know, other desert areas, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, def uh, deficient deficiency in, in, in water supply. And uh, if you take a look at the California itself in, 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 in the United States, they were quite lack in water supply. So they built the Hubo Dam, uh, Hubo Dam, so that uh, uh, the you know that's that's been built in the 1920s and 30s, uh, but uh, but still uh, there's a lack of water because a lot of people are moving uh, to the California area. Uh, so what they have done is that uh, what if we what if we can get the water from the seawater? That's the very important one of the two important projects in the in the 50s. Okay, water from the sea. Okay, and the second project is go to the space. Go to the space. So the space program and the seawater desalination program are the two major programs in the 50s in the United States and perhaps in the all of the world. So they, so they, so in the space program, as you all know, uh, there are very uh, two giant competitions. Okay, Russia and the U.S. The so uh, the U.S. Uh, defeated because, uh, because uh, uh, Russia, uh, at the time the Soviet Union, uh, shoot the uh, special, spe not the special, but the, uh, the ship to the, uh, 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 the space in, I think it's in 1958 or 59, I couldn't remember exactly. But so that at the time, uh, and this was the first paper, I believe, uh, about the seawater desalinations. What it is is that, as it said, they um, investigated the cellulose membranes for seawater desalinations. Now, in this table one, in this table one, they have uh, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, uh, poly, you know, other other polymers like a polytetramethyl ammonium bromide, cellophane, polystyrene, stuff like that, and then. <coughs> Cellulose acetate, butylate, cellulose acetate, stuff like that here. Uh, <clears throat> if you take a look in, in, the second, in the second column, what it is is that they apply the pressure and they have the, uh, the salt permeability. Se the, what they say is, is the semi permeability percent rejection of the sodium chloride by, me by membrane. So if you have a big number here, if it's, if it's uh, 100%, if it's 100, that means that 100% uh, of the uh, salt is rejected and the water, is, water can go on it uh, through the membranes. And uh, most of them are, most of the uh, polymers have a low rejection, whereas the cellulose acetate have 96%, 97% rejection. 97% rejection. They did not say here how much the water go through, okay? But anyway, water, the salt is, cannot be uh, detected in here. Now in, in, the sec in the second table, they have investigated in detail about the cellulose acetate, cellulose acetate with a different salt solution in, in, in this concentration, and apply the pressure about 800, uh, the PSI. 800 PSI is about, uh, 14 PSI is about uh, one bar. So if you divide this by 14, it's about 50, about 50 to 60 bar, right? Less than 60 bar, right? 50 bar. Uh, then they can get the, uh, the rejection rate about, uh, up to about 99%. Now, the limit, let me this, you know, this explain to you a little bit more about this, the, this cell. So they put the membrane here in, the, in, the, in, in between the two, two uh, metals, the frames. So they put the membrane, films, here. And then uh, on top of this the cell, there is an empty, uh, empty spaces, empty tank. 
where they, uh, this empty tank is filled with the solutions like a, like a sodium chloride solution or a magnesium chloride solution, stuff like that. And then apply the pressure with, uh, with this amount. Okay? So, so, so they put the film, polymer film, whatever the polymer film here, and then uh, filled with the solution, salt solution, apply the pressure, and they, uh, because you know the concentration of the, uh, of, uh, the feed solution, uh, what they have to do is that when there is any permeate through the membrane, then they can get this solution and, and analyze it with the DI uh, uh, refractive index or uh, G, uh, GC or whatever, the uh, instrument that you have, and then they get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the rejection percentages. Rejection is defined as Or maybe CP or CF might be might be a little uh, little bit. So uh, when the uh, concentration in the feed, F means feed and P means permeate. Uh, so when there is no salt coming out here in the in the uh, permeate, then you have a hundred percent rejection. If the concentration of the permeate is the same as feed. That means that there is no, there is no rejection. So uh, lower number of this rejection means that uh, this is not functioning well. So, Wright and Breton in 1959 published that yes, cellulose acetate, particularly cellulose acetate, can reject this, the uh, uh, the uh, the sea, uh, the salt, so that they can get the water. But here, as you can see here. There is no permeability there. There is no permeability there. So that's the critic of, the, of this, uh, the, uh, the paper. But anyway, Wright and Breton is the first to discover that cellulose acetate can desalinate this seawater. So this was the first, first attempt, and very important attempt. But as you said, as I said, uh, cellulose, all the cellulose acetate can reject the seawater, the water permeability is very critical to make this cellulose acetate to become commercially available, but there is no data here. So what they have done is that they, they uh, uh, dissolve this cellulose acetate into acetone, acetone, and, and acetone is a, a very good solvent to this uh, cellulose acetate. So they put the, this uh, solution, whatever the concentration might be uh, in, the, in the literature, maybe 10% or 15% of the polymer, in the, into, uh, into acetone and pour, into, uh, pour it on top of the glass plate and slowly you can uh, you know, cast with the rod of the uh, glass or whatever or knife then uh, there is a solution uh, spread on top of the glass plate and after some time, after maybe one hour or two hours of evaporation of the solvent then there is a very dense film which is uh, transparent so that they put this into maybe after soaking or something, and then uh, they put it into, uh, into this uh, the membrane cell. So using the dense membrane, uh, they can get 100 almost 100 percent rejection, but the water permeability it, it might be a critical, but but there is no data. And uh, in 1964, uh, this is the uh, first. Paper in the, appeared in Science as I uh, discovered. Uh, there, this is the letters to the letters to the editor. This is not an article. Okay, letters to the editor, and uh, the authors are really and Garner and Morton. They were all at the uh, uh, General Atomic Division of the General Dynamic Corporation uh, in in California, in, located in San, the San Diego. What they have done is that. They investigated the cellulose acetate membrane. 
okay, the right and breadth and cell of that membrane with the electron microscopy. Well, this is very funny <laughs> uh, right now because it's very easy, you know. You can, you can do that. Uh, but this appeared in, the, uh, in science uh, anyway. So what they have done is that uh, um, they can find the dense layer and the, uh, and, uh, uh, anyway, uh, what, what in the abstract, uh, what, what it is is the electron micrographs of a cellular satellite membrane used in the reverse osmosis process of water desalination reveal a dense layer with a porous substructure. Now, I didn't say the asymmetric membrane, but they have done this electron micrograph with the asymmetric membranes. Now, I will tell you uh, uh, the, uh, the layer or the, what is this uh, symmetric membrane structure. But anyway, uh, they just cut the, uh, uh, they cut the, the cross section of the uh, reverse osmosis membrane and took the, uh, the, uh, the electron microscope. I, I believe this is the TM, transmission electron microscope, not SEM. But uh, anyway, uh, you can take a look at the dense layer and the porous layer. So this is, uh, this is quite interesting. And they cite the first Look at this. First article, J. Japs, 1959. Now, in the second article, Loy Ben Sori Rajan, University of California, Department of Engineering, report. Not publication, but just a report. Okay? So I cannot find this article. I, 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 the, I, I, cannot, I don't have the, uh, the you know, open uh, the, 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 the data here. Uh, but Roeb and Sori Rajana was the f looks like he's the first one. They are the first one doing something. What they have done is that, well, they took this, they took this right and Breton side here, right and Breton side here, uh, the paper, and did very diligently about uh, what if we can have uh, the instead of dense instead of dense membrane, what if we have uh, a symmetric membrane, so that we increase the flux. Now, if you take a look at this uh, structure, you have a dense membrane. Okay? Now, rather than Breton, if you if you evaporate your solvent, acetone, acetone, okay, uh, one hour, two hour, three hours on the uh, in the vacuum oven or or, the, or in the uh, even in the uh, room temperature your solvent will be moving out. So the thickness of your, uh, the cast layer might be going down, but up to the level where your polymer concentration is. For example, if your polymer concentration is about 10% of the polymer, and the rest of them is, um, is what, uh, acetone? So the 80% of your total thickness will be gone because it's moving out. So the total later the residual thickness will be 10% of the initial thickness. So anyway, if you remove your all the all the acetone, you get the transparent and, and dense membrane. Dense membrane, which is transparent. After one hour. Okay? But but uh, if if well so the so but what what the uh, Loeb and sorry Rajan, Loeb, Loeb was uh, the senior student at the UC, UC, UCLA at the chemical engineering department, and sorry Rajan is a postdoc from India, and they worked together on this project, and uh, what they have discussed and uh, worked on is that, uh, well, perhaps the cellulose acetate thickness might be maybe a hundred micron or something like that, okay, hundred micron, if this dense layer is uh, much smaller than 100 micron, for example, 50 micron, 20 micron, and 10 micron, and maybe one micron, what will happen? The flux depended upon the, uh, the, the permeated amount divided by the, uh, the, the thickness. Of the uh, of the membrane, so so all so when you increase your amount of your you know uh, the mass that you go through, 
divide by the uh, thickness is is the flux. And if you decrease your flux thickness from 100 micron to one, mi one, one micron, they increase your flux 100 times. So th this is the thickness dependent amount. The reason why they the Wright and Breton did not have a uh, reasonable amount of water from the seawater, although they have a 100% rejection, is because they have a very thick layer of the, uh, the, of the cellulosic films. So this Loeb and Suri Rajan tried to reduce this active layer thickness. Not whole thickness, but active layer thickness. So what they have done is that instead of uh, waiting for about one hour of evaporation of the acetone solvent, they waited only about 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, what happened? After 10 seconds, you only partially evaporate your solvent from the surface only, not the whole thickness. So the thickness might be, for example, from 100 micron to maybe 90 micron, 95 micron, something like that, because of the evaporation of the solvent of a few seconds. And what they've done is that they put this 95 micron whole membrane into the water for exchange of the solvent, acetone, with the non-solvent water. So solvent and non-solvent will be exchanged to become a uh, white film. Not transparent film, but white film. White because, because of the, uh, the scattered light in the porous structures. So this is the evolution of asymmetric membrane. Now, that's understandable because if you take a look at, if you think about the, uh, the, uh, the concentration of polymer uh, along the uh, cross-section, polymer concentration at zero second, right, immediately after your uh, casting is a 10%, right? All, cross the, cross, uh, all from the top to the bottom. It's all 20% 10, 10 of the polymer. But after one second, two seconds, three seconds, polymer concentration will be increasing at the surface Okay, so, and then you decrease your concentration to 10%. 30% to 10%, 100% to 20%, and so on. So your thickness, active layer thickness will be increasing as a function of uh, temper the, uh, the time. So, th so in that way, they uh, deliberately manipulate the skin layer thickness uh, by controlling the time of, ev of the evaporations. So after a few seconds, uh, they, and, then after, uh, and then later on, they, they put this uh, solution into the water and get the, uh, the, uh, the porous layer on the bottom. Okay. So this is the same polymer, but they get the, uh, the, the asymmetric structure. So that's the second uh, report. And, uh, and, and these people have evaluated and obtained this film and get the TM and published in science. And, uh, and many others, uh, I think they have talked about the other, other things. Now, in 1965, Loeb, <coughs> only Loeb, <laughs> at UCLA, uh, UCLA, he talked about the, uh, the research in California. Uh, the desalination research in California. It's not an article, but it's a letter to the editor as well. And uh, what it says is that in the editorial, uh, I haven't taken a look at this one, desalination water. So this must be, have been a very uh, uh, the, uh, the hot topic at the time, maybe in the 60s and later 50s, right? And uh, Office of uh, Saline Water, Office of Saline Water of the Department of Interior, Department of the Interior was uh, more like a Ministry of uh, Interior in the United States government and uh, sponsored the development of outer membrane desalination process, giving, promise, giving promising results. This development was only partially sponsored by that agency. <laughs> Chronologically, uh, the facts are this. So this is not very important, but I think they have, he, he, he's telling about the history of, uh, of something. Okay. In 1957, Wright and Breton at the University of Florida and under the sponsorship of the Office of Saline Water disclosed that cellulose acetate 
It's semi-permeable to seawater salts. So uh, this, is the, uh, this is their report, actually. This is the progress report, 1957. Uh, Breton was a PI, principal investigator. And I think Wright uh, must have been a student. So, so they supported and look, they found this. Uh, and uh, this is on the progress report. However, their membranes, made by standard casting methods, gave such low fluxes of desalinized water as to be uneconomical and were too thin to be readily handled. In 1960, Loeb and Rajan at the University of California, California Los Angeles announced a technique for fabricating relatively, rel relatively thick, which is about 0.01 centimeter, uh, is about 10, 10 micron. 10 micron cellulose acetate desalination membranes in such a way as to have the uh, flux mentioned in the editorial about 400 liters per square meter per day. Uh, So it's a very large amount. Uh, reports, uh, journal application, uh, publications describe the technique in detail. So this is the, uh, I think, PN uh, Proceedings in American Chemical Society Symposium and so on. And I, I, I couldn't find this one anymore. Anyway, uh, all of this work was sponsored uh, only by the California State Legislature the flux obtained is sufficiently high that the technique is being given seriously, considered by the contractors of the Office of Solar and Water and so on. So it's not very important, but they, he just wanted to point out that uh, uh, maybe there are some other things, but it uh, looks like that the US government does not support, but the uh, California state government uh, supported this uh, research. Uh, that's what, that's what uh, he wanted to uh, mention about it. Uh, in 1967, the, uh, in 1967, the, there is a, another, you know, a science article published in, uh, published about the CO2 and oxygen separation. You take a look at this facilitated transfer already in 1967. So for those of you who know about the facilitated transfer or membranes, you know, it, it looks like it's been a, a new one, but it's not true. So they have already done this liquid membrane uh, already in 1967. Still, they're struggling it. Anyway, uh, this is the article that was, uh, actually this is an article. Uh, it was uh, published by GE, uh, GE in Schenectady, the Ward and Robe uh, at the time. Uh, they were working about the silicon product and uh, they looked at the silicon and others about the auction permeation and CO2 permeation results as well. So, so uh, I think I have uh, you know, talked to you about these processes, but uh, so cellulose acetate uh, can be dissolved in, uh, can be dissolved in, uh, in uh, acetone or THF or whatever, and then you can make the solution. When you evaporate the solvents, then you can get the, uh, the cellulose acetate films, but if you uh, partially evaporate in solvent and then put it into the uh, water or, or other or inorganic solvents, then you can make the, uh, deliberately, you can make these pores. And uh, the, the, the white region or gray regions are the polymer structure, and the dark regions are the porous structures, so you can see the porous cellulose acetate membranes. In fact, this is the microporous membrane, and uh, depending upon the uh, pore sizes, depending upon the pore sizes, we have uh, different scale of the permeation or separation uh, ranges. So first of all, you make the dense membrane as uh, noted by Ryden Bratton in 1959 in JEPS. 
uh, he made about the uh, five, 5 to about 20 micron uh, uh, thickness of uh, cellulose acetate, but there it's very low flux, al although they can get the pretty high rejections of the salt at high pressure. Uh, but Loeb and Surirajan, they made a symmetric membrane. Uh, you know, uh, they they can deliberately just uh, evaporate the solvents uh, only a few seconds or a few uh, about up to about ten seconds, and then uh, they can get about up to about ten times higher flux compared with the uh, dense membrane published by uh, Wright and Breton, uh, but with the same uh, rejection. Okay, rejection, therefore, is dependent upon the nature of the polymer. The flux depended upon the geometry of the membrane itself. Okay. So uh, th those are the two very important things. The, I wanted to note that uh, this CADOT, the uh, 1967 discovery about the TFC, thin film composite membrane. Uh, now, thin film composite membrane is the one that you have the same osmetic structure. But if you take a look at this structure, you have the same polymer from the top to the bottom. Okay, although membrane geometry is a little different. What they have done, Kedot. Uh, Kedot was a very young researcher at the time uh, in the research the institute called the NOSTA Research Institute in, based in uh, Minnesota. Uh, the, uh, the St. Paul, nearby St. Paul and the Minneapolis area. And what they've done is that, what if we have a different polymer from top to bottom? What if we have a porous structure made of one polymer? What if we coat the thin skin layer with a, with a polymer number two? So you have two different polymer, you know, make a composite together, uh, make the same structure like this, but perhaps the better technology. Now, at the time, in 1960s, and perhaps in from the 50s, there's a lot of advancement in the, uh, in the polymer chemistry, particularly in the interfacial polymerization and the aromatic polymer uh, synthesis, like a Kevlar or a Nomex or a PBI or polyimide, now, all those polymers are invented in the 50s and 60s. At the time, uh, the, you know the schutten bauman reaction. Uh, if you have an uh, acid chloride, if you have aliphatic acid chloride and aliphatic uh, diamines, uh, this will react very fastly to become amide. At room temperature. At room temperature. So I show this uh, Schottenbaumann reaction in my the, the, the basic polymer chemistry course. So I prepared acid chloride dissolved in the carbon tetrachloride. And I have a second beaker containing diamine in, in water, in water. So I pour this diamine solution on top of the, uh, the acid chloride solution and, uh, and on, on, at the interface between this acid chloride and tet carbon tetrachloride and the water, there is a thin and white film formed at the interface. But if I remove this film, then there is another still the films formed so that if I will take it over, then you can make a fiber out of that. In other words, if you have a, if you have a, uh, if you have a different bath of acid chloride and the diamine, and in the, in the first roll you have, a, you have a support layer, you have the support polymer membrane, or maybe a Donovan fabric, you have a non one fabric coated with the uh, very porous polysulfones, okay? That's the support layer. And this support layer is, uh, is moved into, uh, rolled, rolled, rolled into the first bath containing acid chloride, okay? And then the, only the surface is coated uh, on top of this polysulfone layer. 
And if the second layer is uh, put into, uh, if this, uh, if this roll is continuously rolled into the second bath containing amine, and, and on, on the top of your polysulfone, you have a very thin, less than one micrometer usually, maybe 10, 10, uh, mm, uh, 200 nanometer or, uh, or 300 nanometer uh, layer of polymer made of uh, uh, polyamide is formed on, the polys on top of the polysulfones. So this technology uh, was first adopted to uh, make these thin film composite membranes. So they make the polysulfone layer uh, separately and then they roll into uh, you know, two baths and make a thin films that this is what the thin film composite polyaromatic uh, membranes concept. So they were successful in the laboratory. They wanted to scale up and uh, this become now, uh, I, I think this company has been sold many times, I think at least five times. And now I think it's become part of uh, Dow, Dow Chemical. Dow Chemical. And, uh, and, uh, and the Cadot gave a lecture at uh, perhaps about uh, more than 25 years ago. Uh, and what, they, what he has done, uh, what's the difficulties and stuff like that in, in one of the seminars that I have attended. Uh, in, at, at LPI in maybe 80, 86 or 87, uh, and it was quite impressive <laughs> about it. But uh, I don't know the fate of uh, this uh, cadot, but uh, the uh, Loeb passed away uh, three years ago. Sodi Rajan, still alive in Ottawa in Canada. Uh, I attended uh, his uh, retirement ceremony about 30 years ago. Uh, in Ottawa, 1986, and he already retired, and uh, he's right now 96 or seven. Uh, I heard that uh, he's not in uh, pretty good health, but uh, but he's still okay in in Ottawa. Uh, I don't know about the fate of uh, Ryan right Breton, but Loeb, sorry Rajan, Cadot, they were very active in membrane. Uh, for the last, uh, you know, four or five decades. So yes, this is the picture. So you make the uh, asymmetric membrane separ separately, and then coat very thin layer. So the mimicking the asymmetric structure uh, of the uh, the, the layer of solid agents. So usually this is the polyamide on the on the surface. Uh, Polysulfone is on the bottom. Uh, very recently, the LG, LG chemical company, but the American company called Nano H2O, uh, with a huge amount of money, about $200 million. Uh, the, uh, uh, Nano H2O is making the auto membrane using this uh, similar concept, but the difference is, uh, is that they contain <coughs> several of the unique features in here. They, they add some of the additives, but the structure is about the same. And they have a uh, sales volume around the 60 million uh, US dollars, and, uh, and but LG came about, about 200 million. So once you make it, you know, invent a very good technology, make it startup company, uh, and it becomes uh, quite a dreams for you. Okay, this is the chronological chart of the outer membrane. I uh, obtained this chart from uh, Cadot, Cadot, a long time ago. And, uh, and as you can see here, the, uh, the first, always the first, is the cellulose acetate film from Ryden Breton in 1959. Discovery of the asymmetric membrane, Loeb and Suri Ryden in 1962. And, uh, and there are three categories. The first categories are about the uh, cellulose acetate. Cellulose acetate. The, the second one is about the, uh, the modified, modified uh, the, the films. Uh, in other words, mm, they can have uh, mm, 
they can have uh, uh, zero acetate films or you know or the asymmetric polyamide TFC membrane uh, along the line of the TFC membrane uh, TFC membrane is uh, is a fleshy membrane of course in other words in other words you have uh, films uh, you have a, you have a roar of the uh, the long uh, fabrics and uh, coat to your polymer so that the later on the product is like this rolled right? it was rolled like this and when they wanted to make the membrane what what they do is that uh, they just put it out and uh, and when they cut this membrane say that this is the membrane and and this is the second membrane if you put the first membrane and second membrane together, there is no space between the uh, membranes. And that's, the space is very important for the permeate. If there is any permeate, there should have been any uh, space for the permeate to go through. So we need a spacer. We need a spacer in between these membranes. The spacers are usually porous spacers like a uh, meshes like a mesh okay plastic mesh or steel mesh whatever uh, or fabrics so when you put membrane on the bottom spacer membrane spacer membrane stuff like that and later on if you pile these layers what they do is that they 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 do roll this all these assemblies together if they roll it, it becomes like these tubes. So when you take a look at these tubes, you have, uh, you have some membrane spirals, spirals of the membranes, okay, membrane layers. Uh, and and, and on, on the center, in the, in the center, you have, uh, you have uh, punctured tubes. You have tubes in, 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 in the core, but the punct uh, you have uh, holes. On the on the plastic rods or steel rods, so uh, so when your feed when your feed is coming through in this direction, the water penet go going through the membrane is going to the spacer, and the spacer along the line of this uh, spacer is just going to the uh, center, and then uh, you collect the water which is permeate in in one direction. So this is how they, how they get the water from the spiral one modules. Now, so they, they invented this TFC or the asymmetric membrane, and, but they changed a little bit of the uh, chemistries. Now they can change the type of diamines, they can change the type of uh, acid chlorides, whether you have aliphatic or aromatic, or whether you have a, a benzene ring or a, a hexa, a cyclohexyl ring, without any double bonds, stuff like that. Those those chemistry has been changed quite a bit, and later on they put the FT name. Then NS means North Star, North Star, okay. NS membrane. This is the uh, film tech, so they changed the name from North Star to film tech. Okay, FT30, FT40, and so on. So you, you named this, uh, this, this all the cattle in the 70s. So it changed a little bit, but, uh, but this was followed by the uh, competitors, like a UOP. UOP copied this, uh, NS100 concept. Uh, Tore and uh, Nitodenko also uh, copied this concept. Very similar chemistry, uh, but they have uh, different products. So. Uh, the, in the 60s, membrane companies uh, pops up in the 60s. 70s, it's like, a, uh, it's like a revolution. So many companies in the world, in, uh, in, the, in, in the globe, uh, they have uh, attended, uh, participate in this, uh, in this game. Uh, DuPont also participated. This is the hollow fiber lane. Uh, they can they can start with the uh, uh, nylon hollow fibers, uh, ramido hollow fibers, uh, and in the in 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 the 60s, in the 70s, Dow Chemical participated in the CTA hollow fiber. 
uh, you can make the film from the cellulose acetate. And they said, why not aloe fiber? Mm -hmm. Because uh, competitor is working on the aloe fiber. But f what, what about the, uh, the cellulose acetate with aloe fiber geometries? So they started, but they, they just gave up. They just gave up, and they sold this to uh, Doyobo. And Doyobo right now produces the world first and only cellulose triacetate aloe fiber membrane. Uh, and it's very difficult, uh, very difficult, uh, so that they have been developing a lot of times. There was a tri-state toyobo uh, hollow fiber uh, is, uh, is quite, quite nice. It's unique, uh, and uh, it can be still used in the desalination as well as gas operations. And they can use this for a PRO, uh, poly, uh, pressure retarded osmosis application too, which I will talk to you uh, later on about this. Dow Chemical uh, uh, still making uh, cellulose hollow fiber uh, the modules, but uh, not, not anymore. The, so Dow Chemical forget about this uh, water business, but uh, but they they concentrate more on the gas. But later on, they realized that the uh, water uh, the business importance of the water business, and they bought this FT, the, fields, uh, the, the film tech, and that has been, you know, become Dow Film Tech for some time. I think they changed the name right now. Okay, so these are the two uh, lines. This is the, uh, the, the Spider-1 module line. This is the hollow fiber membrane module line. Uh, you can see some more tables about the, uh, in the details. We can have uh, fully aromatic polyamides. We can have uh, allyl amide and uh, alkyl amide. We can even have uh, some polyureas. In some cases, the uh, cellulose acetate and triacetates. Uh, acrylonitrile, benzimidazolone, piperazine, Sulfonated polyfuran, even sulfonated polymers, the sulfonated polysulfones. This is the uh, typewritten the table that I got in in, in 1980s. Okay, uh, I think at least I can get this, uh, uh, the copied uh, slide, copied one paper in 1986, which is almost 20. 30 years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago. And they can, they, they did this sulfonated polymer already uh, at the time. Uh, there's a living room chemistry. I think I will stop it at this point. I think it might be, it might be uh, the uh, groundbreaking, but, uh, uh, but I just want, we have a few minutes, but I wanted to take some questions from you, if you have. And then we can start from here uh, next time. Okay. Any questions about the development in, uh, on the membranes? Particularly, I'm talking about the RO. If you don't have any question, then I think I will. Can, I can continue. <laughs> well, this is one the NS one hundred Nostar one hundred. Uh, you know, uh, the amine and uh, acid chloride is important, but instead of acid chloride, you can have NCO. You can have NCO isocyanate. It becomes urea urea uh, at room temperature too, and this is the amide structure. This is the uh, urea structure, and although 
uh, you have a little different chemistry. Uh, amide as well as urea are hydrophilic so that you can attract the water by hydrogen bonding between water and the, 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 the urea bonds or amide bonds because you have a you have an unshared electron pair which can attract this water hydrogen molecule so that uh, the, uh, you can have a solution anyway. Uh, by changing the acid chloride to uh, the TDI, the, you can have a urea chemistry or you can have uh, the, uh, the acid chloride chemistry or the amide chemistry. So uh, by using polyethylene imine, with the uh, reacting with the acid chloride or the uh, similar, you know, isocyanate, you have a different, you know, different series of polymers. So uh, polyurea is ethylene imine with the uh, TDI is NS100, and it's 101 or PA100 or polyamide 100 is this this chemistry. So they change this chemistry and make a different product. Uh, you can see a little bit of a change of the chemistry at the time. And this is uh, the room temperature polymerization, so that uh, you can have you can make a very thin TFC films uh, manufactured on top of these polysulfones. So uh, this is easy. You have a porous structure, uh, well, first of all, and then put it into one bath containing the polyethylene imine dissolved in water. And you coat this layer, uh, and if, if you put this layer in the second bath uh, containing TDI in the hexane, then you can the, uh, have the very thin layer only formed on top of this polymer structures. And if you remove this, uh, the water and the ammonia will be moving out because of the uh, because of this chemistry in this case. And you have a lot of uh, products. FT30 is the one that uh, you know has a cross-linked structure of uh, amide. Uh, it's more like a Normex structure, uh, but this is the very well-known film tech FT30. So you have a uh, uh, trimesoyl chloride uh, reacting with uh, you know uh, methylenediamine reacting together. You make a cross link to structures. If you don't have any uh, uh, the acid chloride, instead, if you have uh, the sulfuric acid, then it's called the but uh, Dupont's uh, B10 membrane compared with FT30. So, so you, you see the structure is almost the same, almost the same, but by changing the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the functional groups, that way you can. Uh, you can uh, escape from the uh, pattern, pattern attack. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, these are the uh, ex existing technologies, FT30 and B10. Okay. So at the, uh, in this first class, I think I have uh, I tried to show you the history of uh, reverse osmosis membrane, starting from, you know, seawater desalination and uh, membrane development, uh, and who are the important persons, what is the important uh, literatures that you have to take a look at it, and uh, what are the structures, and what are the polymers and uh, geometries. So next time, uh, I think I will continue on about this RO, and, uh, and we will talk about the gas later on, uh, in this in, which was developed in the early 80s. Okay, any questions? I know you're very quiet, but <laughs> maybe this is the first time. So be prepared to ask some questions to me. Okay, okay I will distribute the, uh, uh, the PDF files for you, uh, and we will see you on uh, Friday, next Friday. Okay, okay thank you.